All sorts of guys like to drive all night. They do it for years. They do it successfully. Lots of guys prefer running at night. But there are five things that you need to know about night driving. The first thing is that your body's biorhythms are at their lowest ebb. And this is science. This is fact. We know for a fact that the body has high and low ebbs. And at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, your body is at its lowest ebb. It's tired. It's, it wants to rest. It knows when it needs to sleep. And your body is telling you that. So as a result, you're less alert. You're less attentive. So be aware that when you're night driving, you're not at your best. The second thing you need to be aware of is that your visibility, no matter how good your eyesight is, your visibility is less at night. And that just increases the older you get. And there are all sorts of things in the daytime you might pick up that at night you won't necessarily see. Your, your visibility, of your mirrors is lower. You may miss low wires or low overpasses or cars sitting there with no lights on. There are all sorts of things you'll miss because you just don't have the visibility at night that you do in the daytime. If you're carving a tight corner, you may miss a fire hydrant or a telephone pole in the mirrors. Your visibility is lower and this makes it more dangerous. The third thing you need to know about night driving is that most of us have to deliver in big cities. And the fact of the matter is, in big cities, at night, the crime rate goes up and it's more dangerous to travel around at night. The docks you'll be going to, the neighborhoods you'll be going through, it's a more dangerous situation. The visibility is lower and that's when all the crooks and the creeps come out. The fourth thing you should know, and this is a bit of a plus at some points, is that at nighttime the traffic is less. And that's why a lot of guys like night driving because they encounter less traffic and going through the big cities there's a lot to be said for less traffic there's no no rush hour no traffic jams but the problem there again is that other drivers four-wheelers are at their lowest ebb and they're tired they're not paying attention and they're driving poorly and some of them may well be drunk so there's the downside of that and finally the fifth thing you need to be aware of is that you're kind of on your own at night. Most dispatch teams don't work 24-7. They go home at night. You'll have trouble getting a hold of the dispatcher if you have an issue. You'll have trouble getting a hold of the customers if you have an issue, if you need directions or something like that. You're just more on your own at night. Everyone else knocks off at 5 o'clock. But if you're running at 3 a.m., you're kind of out there in the wind on your own. So hopefully you won't get lost. But if you do, you got to figure your own way out of this mess because there's no one around to help you. And as I say, all sorts of guys do it successfully. All sorts of guys do it for years and never have any trouble. But those are five facts that exist when it comes to night driving. So you should be aware of them. Guys, want a little bit of a story? I've got one for you. Many years ago, before deregulation, up here in Canada, there were really only three trucking companies that could run coast to coast with whatever kind of freight they wanted, with the exception of household moving guys. So one of the biggest carriers up here at the time, maybe the biggest carrier, was Reimer. And Reimer was based out of Winnipeg. They were green and white trucks. Somehow, even back in the 70s and 80s, Reimer had figured out how to govern their trucks. I don't know how they did it. Maybe the truck itself just wouldn't go any faster. Maybe it was because that was the way it was geared or whether it was just low on horsepower. No matter what, Reimer trucks were slow and they were always in the road. Us guys hauling reefers, we just had to travel. We had to make the best time we could. There were no log books back then. We were hauling meat. We were the, we were the Montforts of Canada and we had to travel as quickly as we could and back then, back in the 70s and early 80s, just about everything up here was two-lane road. And no matter how you cut the mustard, no matter how you worked it, sooner or later, you'd end up behind a Reimer truck. Now, these Reimer guys often ran teams because they ran so slowly, but they still had time restraints on their freight delivery. So they would run teams, and you, you'd get stuck behind them. But 
they just keep going and going and going. And finally, in, in some areas like northern Ontario, you just couldn't get around them. So you'd have to pull over and rest. But we took great delight in the fact that sometimes we would catch a rhymer team pulled off on the side sleeping. And when we found a rhymer truck, a rhymer team that was sleeping and we knew they weren't supposed to be, what we used to like to do was pull in right beside them and kick the reefer on high speed defrost. And back then the old Therma Kings just were noisier than hell. And you, you, you could raise the dead by turning one of these things onto de defrost. So we'd, we'd roll in beside them, flip the reefer on defrost and lie down for a little nap if we were ready. And sure enough, within about five minutes, the Reimer guys were awake and they would take off again. And we used to love to do that to Reimer trucks. We knew they weren't supposed to be sleeping. And that was their alarm clock when we came along and defrosted the reefer. Anyway, guys, take care, keep the rubber side down, and we'll see you on the backhaul.